Hello, my name is Tammy Medlin, and I'm the local history librarian here at the Wilson County Public Library. And I'd like to welcome you to our program, Wilson Hardware Company, 1907 to 2016. The Wilson Hardware Company was founded in 1907 and opened in 1908. Pictured below are the partners. From left to right, J.T. Strickland, J.B. Barnes, S.W. Richardson, John Deans, and John Bowie Gray III. The two men on the far right are unknown. One by one, the partners retired or dropped out until only the Gray family remained. It, the Wilson Hardware Company would remain in the Gray family until it closed in 2016. This photo shows the storefront or outside of the store before it was renovated in 1944. What did hardware stores sell in the early 1900s? Hammers, nails, shovels, and other gardening tools, along with screen doors and windows, pot belly stoves, shingles, and other building materials. Everyone knows that if we go to Lowe's or Home Depot, we can find water, we can find faucets, and lawnmowers. Well, according to this ad from Wilson Hardware in 1937, things have changed. Here is a water pump that belongs outside or even on a sink, as well as a lawnmower that does not have a motor. I think I prefer living in 2023 to 1937. However, some things stayed the same. On the left, you can see an ad for a crescent wrench in 1937. And on the right, here's one from about Wilson Hardware in 2012. The brand may have changed, but the basic tools stayed the same. The owners were able to keep the store open during the depression by taking out loans against their own life insurance policies. The gamble paid off and in 1944, the outside of the store underwent a major renovation. J.B. Gray IV was in charge at this time. The plate glass windows were installed as, lo as well as automatic doors. Many people in Wilson had never seen such things. So many people came to see the magic doors that the store made $1,200 in the first month. $1,200 was the price for installing the doors. The inside of the store was also modernized. This is a photo of the sales floor in 1961. In December 1950, John Gray IV was interviewed by Southern Hardware for an article they were doing on promotional advertising. He was asked what was his most successful promotion, and he answered in one word, butter. During World War II, butter was not only rationed, it was very hard to find. Mr. Gray, although the owner of a hardware store, was able to secure a large supply of a national brand in one pound packages. He sold it and included a soap dish for a lower price than the grocery stores were charging and he was able to have a more steady supply. He said it was not unusual for them to sell two to 300 pounds of butter per day. It is hard for us to imagine, but in the past, stores in many small towns closed on Wednesday afternoons. They would shut down at 12, 12.30 or one o'clock. And Wilson Hardware and many other stores in Wilson did this, including Belt Tyler's. Well, they still needed to make the same amount of money even though they were closed for half a day. So they would run specials on Wednesday mornings to get people in the store and hope they would pick up other items while they were there. This is a photo of Mr. Gray showing a so-called special to a shopper in 1950. In addition to building supplies and tools, Wilson Hardware was known as a very good place to buy plants. One of the most popular items were their gladiolus. Um, the florists in the 40s and 50s were charging $3 a dozen. These flowers were very popular for weddings, flower arrangings and arrangements and things like that. And the hardware store was actually able to sell them for 79 cents a dozen, which is like 
less than one third of the price, the florists would charge you for the same plant. So they were very popular. It was not unusual for them to sell three to four hundred dozen gladiolas um, on Fridays and Saturdays. Another thing they had, were known for were their rose bushes, and they actually had two kinds of rose bushes. They had the smaller rose bushes, um, which were pricing them from that were about 89 cents, and then the larger ones would be a dollar 89. Now, believe it or not, the dollar 89 ones were more popular because homeowners, people who were going to plant these bushes out in their yard and wanted people to see them, would actually prefer the larger bushes, the dollar 89. Now, the ladies would come in and buy the flowers, and hopefully they would see the housewares, the dishes, and other things that they would like to have for the house, or maybe see something their husband could use, or maybe the husband was coming in to buy, you know, tomato plants for the garden, or he was coming in to buy something like a tool or a rake or a shovel, and he would see something his wife would like. So hopefully you could get more business from people, you know, people coming in to buy plants, buying extra items, and it seems to have been very successful, um, a very good idea. Many stores in Wilson, as I mentioned, participated in the Wednesday morning specials, but another big tradition in Wilson were, were the Christmas windows. Um, at one time, it was a city, it was a practice for local businesses to decorate their front windows with special displays at Christmas, and people would come downtown. They would visit downtown to come and look at the windows. Mr. J.B. Gray V, Bowie, remembers that in the 60s, the sidewalks would be very crowded during the week leading up to Christmas. Now, this ended in the 1970s. The city tradition ended in the 1970s when Parkwood Mall opened, but Wilson Hardware continued to decorate their window every year. Um, this is a photo of their, wind, of their Christmas display, their Christmas window from 1999. People may be wondering, why would somebody come into a hardware store at Christmas time? What in the world can you buy somebody from Christmas at a hardware store unless you're, it's your father or your husband or your brother and he needs a hammer or a fishing rod? Well, Wilson Hardware had a little bit more. Here they have what they call the red wall. Um, this photo is from about 2012, and you can see they've got the little red tricycles and the old-fashioned radio flyer wagons, which had continued to be popular for a long time. Um, at different periods, the store had sold Lionel Trains, Madame Alexander and Raggedy Ann and Andy dolls, and sometimes even roller skates. Sleds were also a very popular item. Um, this photo is from early 2004, either January or February. It's snowing outside. They have leaned the sleds up against the lamppost. And they're probably reminding people, hey, it's snowing. If you miss one at Christmas, we've still got them now. Another regular tradition at Christmas was for the Wilson Christmas Parade to be broadcast on the radio while it was viewed from the second floor window of Wilson Hardware. Um, this is a photo of Linda Dew, who was actually a bookkeeper slash secretary for Wilson Hardware. Um, she started work there when she graduated from high school in 1969, and she continued there until the store closed in 2016. And the radio announcer's name is Wallace Bullock, and he is for a local radio station. And this was something they would do every year. After 109 years, Wilson Hardware closed its doors for the last time on June 30th, 2016. And the staff and owners include the following message. We consider it a real privilege to have served Wilson and the surrounding communities for the past 109 years. We have made a lot of friends and will miss you all. As we begin our retirement, we look forward to seeing you all at many local functions and activities in Wilson. We have strived hard to be the best hardware store in Wilson, and you made that possible when you voted us number one in the hardware contest many years ago. A piece of history will come to a close, but the memories of all that transpired within the doors and walls of Wilson Hardware will be forever etched in our minds. We love and appreciate each of you and wish you all the best. Thank you for being loyal and faithful customers that allowed us to remain here so long.
the owner and staff of Wilson Hardware Company, 116 East Nash Street, downtown Wilson, J. Bowie Gray Jr., Linda C. Du, Angela M. Dell. Now, I have heard him refer to Mr. Gray as J. Bowie Gray Jr. at several times doing the research for this project. I have spoken to Mr. Gray and he informed me that his grandfather, who bought into the store in 1907, was J. Bowie Gray III. His father was J. Bowie Gray IV. And Mr. Gray himself is J. Bowie Gray V. So it is not, it's not junior. You would have to go back past 1907 probably for that. So it is J.B. Gray the fifth. We have spent a lot of time in this program talking about the Grays. Um, they were the last of the original partners to be, to be involved with the store. Um, but I don't think it's right to end this program and I don't think Mr. Gray would want me to end this program without taking a look back at some of the staff at Wilson Hardware through the years. So this is a photo of the staff from 1980 Left to right, J.B. Gray V, who became Bowie, J.B. Gray IV, his father, T.J. Newton, Linda Dew, Fred Eagles, Daniel Lucas, Paul Walters, and Bill Flowers. And this is a photo of the staff from August 2004. Left to right are Wesley Farrell, Bill Flowers, Braden Usury, Linda Dew, Angela Dale, and Bowie Gray. Photos and other information used in this program were from the Wilson Times, um, promotional advertising, an article by J.M. Gregory, which appeared in Southern Hardware in December 1950, Hardware News, which was a newsletter produced by the Wilson Hardware Company, March 1937, and most especially, the, from the private collection and memories of Mr. J. Bowie Gray V. I enjoyed looking at it. I enjoyed hearing his stories. Mr. Gray, thank you. And thank you to your family for ser and staff for serving Wilson for over 100 years. Thank you for joining us for the Wilson Hardware Company to 1907 through 2016. Thank you.